My name is Johannes. I want to share about the 1994 Economic Nobel Prize Review as my final exam in the economic major on the Executive MBA at IPMI International Business School, Jakarta. Here we go. In 1994, the Economic Committee decided to award a Nobel Prize. John Ness, John Harsony, and Reinhard Shelton share the Nobel Prize in Economics for their pioneering analysis of equilibria in the theory of non-cooperative games. John F. Ness introduced the distinction between cooperative games in which binding agreements can be made and in cooperative games where binding agreements are not feasible. Ness developed an equilibrium concept for non-cooperative games that later came to be called Ness Equilibrium. Renard Shelton was the first to refine the Ness equilibrium concept for analyzing dynamic strategic interaction. He has also applied this refined concept to analysis of competition with only few sellers. John G. Harsany show how games in completed information can be analyzed, thereby providing a theoretical foundation for a lively field of research, which focuses on strategic situations where different agents do not know each other's objective. In other words, they receive the Nobel Prize for their work in game theory. You may recognize the name John S. if you ever seen the Academy Award winning 2001 movie, A Beautiful Mind. In the film, Ness is portrayed by actor Russell Crowe. The film highlights nice brilliance in the field of game theory and mathematics, and also his battle with Caesar Penia. In the next session, we'll see the movie clips, how Nas got a brilliant idea which then triggers the formulation of the famous Nas equilibrium theory that would develop into an entirely new thought in economics. Deep breaths. Nash, you might want to stop shuffling your papers for five seconds. <laughs> not buy you gentlemen beer. Oh, well, we're not here for beer, my friend. Oh. Hmm. Does anyone else feel she should be moving in slow motion? Uh, <laughs> well, she want a large wedding, you think? Should we say swords, gentlemen? Pistols at dawn? Have you remembered nothing? Recall the lessons of Adam Smith, the father of modern economics. In, uh, in competition. Individual, Individual ambition, ambition serves, serves the common good. good. Exactly. Every man for himself, gentlemen. Yeah, and those who strike out are stuck with their friends. Yeah, I'm not going to strike out. You can lead a blonde to water, but you can't make a drink. I don't think he said that. All right, nobody move. She's looking over here. Right, she's looking at Nash. Oh, God. All right, he may have the upper hand now, but wait until he opens his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> remember the last time? Oh, yes, that was one of the history books. <laughs> Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we win. That's the only way we all get laid. <laughs> Adam Smith said, the best result comes from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself, right? That's what he said, that's right? Incomplete, incomplete, okay? Because the best result would come <laughs> from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governing <laughs> dynamics, gentlemen. Governing dynamics. Adam Smith. What's wrong? Yep, here we go. Careful, careful. Thank you.
you realize this flies in the face of 150 years of economic theory? Yes, I do, sir. That's rather presumptuous, don't you think? It is, sir. Well, Mr. Nash, with the breakthrough of this magnitude, I'm confident you will get any placement you like. That story how Nash equilibrium theory was created. And the famous way to demonstrate this concept is through a sample called the prisoner's dilemma. Imagine that there are two gentlemen, John and Alex. They had been caught red handed separately for selling drugs. But when the district attorney meet and have a chat with them, he start to have a suspicion, for whatever reason, that these were two characters that actually committed a much more serious offense, that they had committed a major armed robbery a few weeks ago. But he has no hard evidence. So, for make sure his hand, his visit, he tried to get a deal with each of these guys, so that they have a incentive to, essentially, snitch on each other. What he tells each of them is, for the drug selling, you surely will get in jail for two years. But for robbery, if you confess and other doesn't, you will get one year and the other gets ten years. But if you deny and other doesn't, you will get ten years and the other get only one year. But if both of you confess, it's of you get ten years, three years. So, from what the district attorney had over, John and Alex were thinking how to decide what they want. With the payoff matrix, we can predict what they will decide for their own sake. Let's see. John and Alex have the same option, which is confess or deny. In this metric, if they both confess, each of them get three years. But if John confess and Alex doesn't, he get one year and Alex get ten years. And so too will the other way around. But if they both deny, they get only two years just for drug selling. What is the globally optimal scenario for them? Well, the scenario is where they both deny having anything to do with the armed robbery, they get two years. But what we will see is the scenario is actually somewhat rational, assuming that they don't have any strong realities to each other, or we can say that they don't trust each other, and they are afraid to get ten years here. So, with this thinking, the most rational or most logically is for both of them to confess. And this confession quadrant is actually that we call as Nash Equilibrium. For the conclusion, through their contribution to equilibrium analysis in non-cooperative scheme theory, the three laureates constitute a natural combination. Nash provided the foundation for the analysis, Sartan developed it with respect to dynamics, Harsanyi with respect to incomplete information. Game theory may sound trivial. It is not. In the past 20 years or so, it has revolutionized the economic of industrial organization and has influenced many other branches of the subject, notably the theories of monetary policy and international trade. These days, no economic students can hope to graduate without knowing the rudiments of it. Thank you for watching.